Andrew, there's a number of people today, quite loud, you'll see them in the media or even in the professing church, who will use Galatians 3.28 as a sort of proof text that we've done away with gender and roles and all these things. The text there says, for there's no longer Jew nor Greek, slave nor free. And then Paul says, male nor female. And he's talking about this oneness in Christ. Is Galatians 3.28 the proof text for doing away with gender as just some social construct and a proof text supporting the idea of women pastors, women elders. Hey, we, everybody can be everything now. Can you speak to a right understanding of Galatians 3.28? Okay. Oh, there's so much in that. Um, the first thing I would say is that's a wrong interpretation. Okay. Because it's a cheap interpretation. Mm. Uh, verse 28 and verse 27 that comes just before is making so clear that the the big doctrine that is being put on display is the the glory of the atonement that there's no second level transformation that takes place but when god saves us through the work of jesus christ mm. we are fully united to him we are uh, f uh raised to a new life that we are um we, we have hope that one day we will appear with him again uh colossians chapter 3 verse 4 all, all of those things are are guaranteed and what what that point in galatians is saying in a world that was so divided mm. is like, our normal divisions in this world yeah. it doesn't change the doctrine of salvation that, that jesus saves the the jew and the gentile completely mm. that, that jesus saves the slave and the free completely. And Jesus saves the man and the woman completely. That's the point, and that's an amazing point that we should soak in. Yeah. I need a glory in and have a confidence in. And his, his big idea there is in a world where the slaves had to go in one door and uh, the free man another, where, where there was very obvious distinctives um, you go to the, the temple, the, the Gentiles could be in one court, yeah. the, the Jews could have their exclusive court and be in that. Same with the men and the women, you could you could be in your own space if you were a man. Uh, if you were a Jewish man, you didn't have to come in contact with a woman or a Gentile uh, if you didn't want to on that day. You could just go to that court within the temple and be all alone. I don't think it would be very good for you, but you could, you could do that. But no longer this glorious true religion that is found in Jesus Christ is one that restores every single individual completely fully and wonderfully now when it comes to our interpretation of scripture we should see that obvious point in the text mm -hmm. and revel and soak in it what is dangerous is then when we impose something upon the text. Mm. And I would say when somebody comes to that and imposes an egalitarianism that says there's now no gender distinctives, that, that I would say that's clearly wrong because scripture interprets scripture. Mm -hmm. You go to the very next book of the Bible, uh, the book of Ephesians, and there's very clear distinctives yeah. uh, in the home for men and for women. Also, interestingly, for slave and for free, mm -hmm. there's distinctives about how the slave is meant to relate to his yep. master and how the master is meant to treat his slaves. God cares and God has standards about those things. And he speaks into them, but he doesn't remove those distinctives. And so the man and the woman are still there. And you go to the... Um, later books that were written in the Old Testament, you think of the letters of Timothy, they're most likely some of the last portions of scripture that mm. uh, Paul writes. And again, there, when he's talking about elders, he, yep. he's talking about a male role. So you can't pick out a verse in scripture to impose an agenda. The scripture harmonizes. Mm. The, the end so to check is our interpretation of this first right we use the rest of scripture to speak into that mm -hmm. and when we do in that particular circumstance very clearly uh, we can't interpret no more male nor female there and say okay gender roles are gone because 
well, then why on earth did they reappear again, yeah. uh, you know, in all the other books? Mm. So scripture becomes your great check to make sure that you're not imposing your agenda, but you're actually hearing what's being said. And the reason that's so important is because what you have there in Galatians 3, 28, that is in and itself the obvious meaning. It's way more helpful and important than, you know, our world agendas that we care about. Um, but but we try to depress again. I don't want to hear what society today thinks. I want to hear what God says and how He expects Christians in society today to act. Amen. So it's not doing away with role distinctions and God's design for people. It is about the beauty and the glory of Christ that we're one in Christ, and that there's no second class citizens. No, and no other method to be right with God and through Jesus Christ. Amen.